Before we move on, I just want to say something about Victor Wimanyama. We've done plenty of Valentines on here. I'm not going to spend time doing that. I watched him go go for 40 and 20 on Friday night. Tonight, Sunday night, he had 32 points, uh, nine rebounds, five assists, four steals, and three blocks. It's pretty good. In the, in the first <laughs> six possessions of this game, uh, Victor had two blocks, a steal, and he broke up a, a lob. Um, six possessions, the Warriors scored on two. The other two times, Victor got his hands on the ball. Um, we have talked about how the Spurs are going to have the big challenge of building this team around him. I really honestly only see one or two of these guys lasting for more than two or two seasons really around him. But having been in the Knicks locker room Friday night and been in the Warriors locker room tonight, the way these players are talking about Victor playing against him, um, Draymond tonight was like, um, and Draymond was brilliant in this game, arguably one of his best games of the season. Mm -hmm. He had uh, 21 points and 11 of six, six rebounds, six steals, blocked out Victor on basically the game clinching play where he just just got Mich Michigan State style position and. Yep. He Although Victor was not thrilled about that. He thought that he he, 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 yeah. he was not. And regardless of that, Draymond earned that rebound. He just yeah. boxed him out. He's given up 10 or 11 inches, boxed him out. Draymond used four varies. Very, 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 very good. These teams, not only are they blown away by what they're watching from Victor um, on, when they're playing against him, but where they saw him early in the season. The Knicks, for example, saw Victor in... November, November. I you were November at that 8th. game. I wasn't at the game, but it was oh. November 8th. He was not good. He had 14 points or whatever. He he just he didn't impress anybody that game. Yep. It was a big buildup for his first game at the Garden, and he was very blah. He goes for 40 and 20 the next time they see him. The Knicks are like, whoa. I mean, they obviously know what he's doing, but they experienced it. And so all I'm going to say is this. Yes, the Spurs have a responsibility and a challenge to build this roster around him. But having spent this weekend here, I am going to say that there is going to be a player or two who is going to be forward thinking and want to get himself to San Antonio. Somebody is going to see this opportunity and they are, this is my prediction. I am making a prediction. Somebody oh is, man. Wow. Some, Stop Here we go. the presses. Hold on. Let me get ready. Stop somebody them. somebody is it. going to see this opportunity and say, I can get myself to, San Antonio, I can be this guy's running mate. I got to do it. And there's wide open space to do it. Well, now, I, would, I would say as an just as a brief addendum to that, because of what we talked about before, this to me is the challenge for the Spurs that we have laid out, which is let's say you are correct, right? Let's say there are guys who say, I want to go play with this 7-4 phenom from France. 7-5. Whatever, 7-5, sure. <laughs> and maybe it'll be 7-9 soon. Uh, Let's say that happens, right? You could say whatever you want about wanting to go play there. There has to be a pathway to you actually getting there, right? Right, And that is the challenge. And this is what we've talked about with the Spurs before. There's going to be an expectation from the average person that the Spurs are in the top six next year because of the way this season has ended, because of how great Victor has been. There's just going to be a general assumption that they're going to be awesome next year. And it's going to be very difficult. No, to They are not. <laughs> I agree no. with you. I'm right. saying the general perception is going to be the Spurs should be in the playoffs. And there's going to be a pressure to speed this up because of that. And what yeah. the Spurs have to be careful about is not costing themselves the opportunity to get the kind of player that yeah. wants to come there later. We understand that. We don't have to go over that again. But I will say it doesn't necessarily have to be this summer or even next season. But at some point, somebody's going to see this in it. My guess is, and this is just a total guess, my guess is it's not going to be a guy who's in his early 20s on his first on the fun max contract. My guess is it's going to be a guy on his second contract um, or maybe at the end of his first you know, big contract who realizes I'm not going to be able to, because you know, you know, I can sit here and say, wow, wouldn't it be amazing if Aunt Edwards played with Victor Wembanyama? Yeah, it would be amazing. Guess what? Aunt Edwards ain't going anywhere, all right? I'm talking about, Somebody who's maybe Windhorse, colon. 
Ant and Victor to team up. You can see the headline already. You can yeah. See the headline already. Uh, yeah. Right. I'm well, just listen. Saying, there's already plenty of there's already plenty of turmoil in Minnesota as we speak. So yeah. <laughs> just add to it. Yeah, sure. I, I'm just there's gonna somebody is gonna recognize they already are recognizing what they see here and. Well, how about he, this? Can I just throw out a name? I sure. that's you're very dangerous, but go ahead. I mean, aggregated. If I'm if I'm thinking of a guy on his second or third contract, something like that, why not a Donovan Mitchell type? Well, now you're now you're gonna be never allowed back on the pod because you're taking a shot at Northeast Ohio. <laughs> Donovan is not playing well at all right now. His his knee doesn't look right. That's a different conversation. Um yes, that type of player. Right. Uh, I'm not sure that Donovan isn't is not is has decided he's not a one. Um, well, and I, I also th think. I, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I think it's got to be a player who's like. This is. I hate saying this word. Because I lived this for years in Cleveland, it's got to be a guy saying I'm okay being Scottie Pippen, which Scottie Pippen wasn't necessarily okay with being Scottie Pippen, but like. And that that makes a Jordan comparison, but like that's the they got to be a guy who says I'm okay with that. Is at a point in his career where he wants that. That's but, what but, I think but, they need. But if Donovan Mitchell, um, I mean, there was a time that he allegedly wanted to play with Bam and Jimmy. He wasn't going to be the number one there. Mm, I mean, maybe not in a playoff in the regular season. In the fourth, he would have been sure. Okay. I mean, I I, I think if 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 that. Let's just not, let's not say that it, that it would happen in Miami. Let's just say that there was a new team was created and Bam, Jimmy, and uh, Donovan were together. I think Donovan would be regarded as the one. Maybe not in playoff Jimmy land. But, right, that's fair. Yeah. So, look, I, I walk back away from the Donovan thing. I just <laughs> that, that's my big. By the way, that that was me. That don't aggregate Brian. Don't and aggregate. I'll say something Bonnie. else. I'm sure you'll get aggregated. I'm sure you'll aggregate. And yeah, I'll yeah, say sure something else. Yeah. Make fun of me all you want. I've lived in Miami. I've lived in New York City. I spend 50 days a year in Los Angeles. You can say whatever you want about what I'm about to say, okay? San Antonio is a growing city. Lots and lots of people have moved to San Antonio in the last four or five years. I drove from Austin to San Antonio the other day. There is no difference between the cities now are grown together. I-35, it is one giant megalopolis from Austin to San Antonio. They're playing, wow. they playing games in Austin, Austin. now. Yeah. They have the number one practice facility in the NBA. <laughs> this, if you want to think of it as a cow town, like it was the turn of the century, fine. And is, and is it New York or LA? Of course not. But there's a whole bunch of people moving to Texas and they're moving to Texas for a lot of reasons. And there's a lot of people moving to San Antonio. So it ain't Cleveland. And I say that as somebody from Cleveland. Okay. So wow. say whatever you want about nobody ever wanting to be in San Antonio. Go ahead and say it. I'm telling you, that's not necessarily true. It may be true for a lot of guys. Somebody is going to be like, you know what? That's not a bad place. They have a great practice facility. There's no state income tax. And I can play with Victor Wembanyama for the rest of my career and make a ton Good of organization, money. organization, right? Good organization. Of course. That goes yeah. without saying. Yeah, that's well, what I'm walking away. I'm leaving San Antonio now, but that's what I'm walking away saying. Well, okay. and that's the challenge. That's the challenge that the Spurs have is to get. They have to have the ability to get that kind of player when they become available, and not box themselves mm -hmm. out of it by rushing into other stuff. I agree, and they have all the assets to do that right now. And the all other right. thing I want to say, really quick, just to your point about Victor, the the comparison with the first game against the Knicks and the second one is an apt one because we have had a lot of discussions, especially earlier in the year, about Victor. Victor was not the rookie of the year for the first half of the season. Yep. He was not he was not good for much of the first half of the season. He's going to win rookie of the year in a runaway because he has taken massive steps forward over the second half of the season. And I think he deserves a lot of credit not only for shifting over to play center, but for the ways he has improved and the ways he has gotten better over the course of these 82 games. And he's made sizable improvements in a lot of different areas of his game which is why he's doing insane stuff now and he was having a lot of games like that game against the Knicks in November and December and I, I just think it's easy to forget because of how ridiculous some of these box scores are 
but the guy has had some remarkable improvement over the course of these few months. And it's pretty exciting to think about what that could mean going forward. To your By the point, way, to yeah, your point, ahead. real quick, Brian, to your point, Tim, the <laughs> the growth he's made in a span of six, seven months, whatever it's been, is the stuff that some guys don't do over five years. Okay. Or ever. Ever. Right. But I'm talking about star level players. Yes. Do yes. In three to five years, necessarily. Yes. Uh, so, by the way, while the Knicks were very complimentary of Victor, they were pretty much demanding that he get fined because at the at the end of the game, in celebration of that big win for the Spurs, he threw the ball into the stands, which was a the Jalen Brunson sixty one point ball, which <laughs> I don't think he really wanted. Um, I think he'll want it later. Because it was, you know, mellow. Jalen's a wins and losses guy. He is, he right. is not right. happy about that. I mean, if it was Giannis, we know that he would have wanted the ball. But all that's right. But also, um, Dante DiVincenzo set the Knicks record for threes in a season with it. Not that that's going into the Springfield, but like you know, the ball had some some real value. And um, <laughs> there's a ball boy working the Knicks bench. He's a Spurs ball boy working the Knicks bench. He like sprinted up into the stands and somehow got the ball back. I have no idea how he did, but he got it back. Wow. And the Knicks better got taken care of. (laughs) The Knicks were very pleased about that. And they were in possession of the ball, but they were like, look, uh, you're getting 25 K buddy. And Victor did not like that. As George mentioned, he was like, no, I've seen people throw the ball into the stands in anger many times, but I was throwing it out of happiness. I was trying to make a guy's day. He would made the guy's pocketbook. Um, He's like, I shouldn't have gotten, you know, fifth, 25 grand for that. So welcome to the NBA. Come uh-huh.